Hello, today is Friday, long live Friday. It's August 18th, 2023. Um, didn't do a video yesterday, just kind of wore out the heat. It's been pretty crazy here in Wyoming today. It's 102 degrees, that's hotter than Joe Biden's tax returns. Woo! It's crazy out there. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, between yesterday and today, there's been all kinds of different things that have came out in the news. Uh, President Biden uh, apparently has three pseudonym names that he uses, Robert Peters, Robin Ware, and J.R.B. Ware. Uh, you know, basically he's uh, Robert Peters to pay Biden, I th the Biden son, Hunter Biden, Robin Peter to pay Paul, whatever you, you got to look at there. <clears throat> I mean, with the uh, money laundering and the pay-to-play schemes under Joe Biden's name, they have recovered or uncovered 20 million that he's had go through his accounts and his grandchildren's. How many millions more do we think with each pseudonym name we're going to find that he has been laundering and pay for play and being bought by China? Kind of interesting. I, I wonder what's going to happen with that. Um, so, <clears throat> Georgia State Senator Colton Moore is trying to impeach Fannie Willis for her involvement with indicting Trump. Um, hopefully he can get that done because that woman is absolutely crazy. She's trying to charge Trump with 700 years in prison or the death penalty for just saying that January 6th, or not January 6th, my bad, that the 2020 election was stolen. Is all that she's saying that, that that's her evidence is he uh, exercised his freedom of speech to say that he thought that the 2020 election was stolen and they're wanting to give him 775 years or the death penalty for that which like I've said many times on my program here uh, Dinesh D'Souza with 2000 Mules has irrefutable evidence to prove that it was stolen uh, it's kind of kind of interesting there um, we've got the fires in Maui, which are just absolutely devastating. There's still thousands missing, um, and it's horrible to say that a lot of them are children. Uh, and what we're seeing with the fires in Maui is kind of crazy. Joe Biden issued a statement saying that he wants to give every person in Maui a one-time payment of $700, which comes out to $1.9 million. Dollars. That's all he wants to help them with. I mean, these people lost everything. Their houses, their, I mean, their livelihood, everything. And it's only worth $700 to the Biden administration. But in that same token, he wants to send $24 billion to Ukraine to aid them. He wants to send F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine as well, which... Basically, that just uh, spells out world, you know what the word is, three. And uh, basically, that brings us right to the brink of that. Um, yeah, uh, to offer them $700 one-time payments uh, is absolutely asinine, if you ask me. Uh, and to send $24 billion to Ukraine again to keep his cover-ups and all of that going is not cool the american people are suffering what are we going to do for them that's what we need to start asking what are we going to do for the american public he's only worried about ukraine because they want to keep covering up the bioweapons that they created there the vid was created there the laundering of money the ftx scam i mean the child trafficking everything that they're doing and using Ukraine as a hub, and then they have their actor out front, Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky, or whatever his name is, is just a paid actor. I mean, he's got mansions in the U.S., he's been to uh, concerts and all kinds of stuff on our tax dollars. Uh, very interesting stuff. Um, basically, I wanted to uh, play a clip for you. Um, I'm going to show you on my phone because I'm not skilled enough to... to uh, transfer videos yet but I will get there but I wanted to play this video really quick because uh, it talks about um, Joe Biden himself 
saying that there was election interference and they pulled it off. We put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. That's, we have put together, I think, the most... That's absolutely right from Joe Biden's mouth, saying that they put together the best voter fraud in U.S. history. And yet they're trying to indict Donald Trump for saying that the 2020 election was rigged. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And then I'm going to share this quick article with you that I found uh, on Twitter. Uh, it says, 59 years ago, the U.S. government killed its own president in broad daylight. Here's why. It starts with Operation Northwoods, a proposed false flag operation that originated with the U.S. Department of Defense in 1962. The proposal called for CIA operatives to both stage and commit acts of terrorism against American military and civilian targets, blaming them on Cuban government and using them to justify a war against Cuba. This list of potential attacks detailed in the document include the remote control of civil and air, civilian aircraft, which would be securely repainted as U.S. Air Force planes, a fabricated shootdown of U.S. Air Force fighter aircraft off the coast of Cuba, the assassination of Cuban immigrants by sinking boats and Cuban refugees on the high seas, blowing up a U.S. ship and orchestrating terrorism in the U.S. cities. The plan was drafted by Joint Chiefs of Staff signed by Chairman Lyman Lamentes and sent to the Security of Defense before it was rejected by John F. Kennedy. What decent human being would sign such a thing? In the nuclear exchange with the Soviet Union that would have followed such an attack, more than 300 million human beings worldwide would have been killed. There already existed great distrust towards Kennedy among those in the military and intelligence communities who perceived him as having mishandled the CIA's ill-conceived Bay of Pigs invasion. Now, following his rejection of Operation Northwoods, this distrust deepened further. At this time, the Kennedy brothers were making big changes and making powerful enemies in the process as JFK was working to end the Cold War and the growing power of the military-industrial complex. His brother Robert was prosecuting organized crime figures with ties to the mafia who had lots of political influence at the time. The president could no longer be allowed to live. Shortly after JFK was assassinated in Dallas, Lyndon Johnson took over as president. Once president, Johnson began escalating the war in Vietnam, all based on a lie. There was reports that Vietnamese torpedo boats had fired on USS Maddox in the Gulf of Token. Knowing these reports were false, Johnson retaliated for an attack that never occurred. By the end of the war in the Southeast Asia, 58,000 Americans and 2 million Asians had been killed. Of course, billions of dollars had been made by the defense contractors in the process. To the men who make such great profits, that human cost of war is nothing. The military-industrial complex, alive and well, war is not only profitable to those who wage it, and it also gives the government an excuse to exert more authority over its subjects. Those in power will find an excuse, and if they can't, they'll make one up. War is murder. Those in power do not care about you. They will sell you out for more power and, quick, and a quick buck in a heartbeat. Do not fall for their tricks. They lie to us for their benefit. That was a interesting article that was on uh, Twitter earlier. I just wanted to share that with you because, I mean, we have um, irrefutable proof now that basically the CIA was behind the JFK assassination on Lyndon B. Johnson's orders. Um, but the other thing I wanted to touch on quick, uh, we were talking about the fires in Maui that are absolutely horrible and the Biden administration wants to do nothing for those people. Um, billionaires like Oprah Winfrey and all kinds of people are coming out of the woodwork and asking to buy up the land. Um, it's been speculated that they want to buy it all up 
so that way when China comes in with an offer to buy it, to put another military base really close to the U.S., uh, they can sell it for billions of dollars to China, which if you look, China already built a military base in Cuba, as I've told you on uh, my broadcast before. They have secret military police installments in uh, the U.S. and New York, uh, police headquarters all over with Chinese people. They're building manufacturing plants in the U.S., in, uh, I believe one in Michigan, there's one in Texas. It's kind of like a game of chess. They're strategically positioning their pieces, and then in chess, what is the end game? It seems like it's checkmate. So pay attention out there. Keep an eye out. Um, if you can, like and subscribe my channel. Uh, if you can't, like and subscribe my channel. Keep an eye out for, uh, like I said, Stephen Gardner. He's good to watch. Uh, redacted with Natalie and Clayton Morris, Dan Bongino, uh, Newsmax, wherever you can get at least a shred of truth in today's world, get it from there because the other places that you can get the information do not want to tell you the truth. They don't want you to know the truth. And if you try to speak the truth, they try to shut you up. So that's my video today. And just remember, that's the ugly truth. Have a good day.